Hello, I'm David Fletcher from Leap Australia. I'm the Senior CFD Specialist and I'm about to give you a brief introduction to the new features of ANSYS 2019 R3 in the fluids domain. So let's get started. We'll start with uh, Fluent um, and specifically with the Fluent meshing. As you're aware that lots is being done to make the Fluent uh, meshing something um, which is easy to use, easy to replay, etc. And in this release, you'll find a lot of usability enhancements. Um, tables have been introduced into some of the managers. It's easier to select and choose um, things, or objects that you want, or boundary conditions. Uh, when you create something, an automatic name will be made. The um, workflow template files have been simplified um, now. So those really are going to make life a bit easier when you're using it. In terms of other usability features, you can now use the um, watertight workflow within Workbench. So that means that you can include fluent meshing now within Workbench and use it, for example, as part of a parametric study, part of a fluid structure interaction simulation, etc. So that's increased the flexibility enormously. There have been other enhancements. When you create um, shared topology in space claim, if, if this is a very complex model, and for example, that partially fails, you can now bring those files into um, fluent meshing, um, into this um, uh, workflow, the watertight workflow, and, and finish the job off there. You've now got the option to generate periodic um, boundary conditions that are translational as well as rotational. And there were some significant improvements in the way you can join up um, the uh, meshes here, and particularly when you're using the hex core, and we'll come back to that in a moment. Um, but you can also fill solids with polyhedra. You can um, make sure that renaming you do remains persistent. You can also make more use of the size field throughout the, the meshing um, application. On the fault tolerant workflow, I know fewer people are using that, but you've now got some more options what you do for your solid regions. Um, you can import more types of files and there's a lot more flexibility with mesh controls. So this is really for those of you who've got very dirty CAD, very large assemblies that you're working on and maybe you need to wrap them. So you're gonna find that task a lot easier um, at this release. If we go back to um, the meshing um, details, one of the things that's been introduced is we're used to this idea of proximity, having the number of cells across a gap, but here you'll see this is a fraction, 0.3. So what this allows you to do is have quite a coarse mesh across a gap. Now, if this were a fluid gap, of course you wouldn't want to do this, but if this were a solid, you might be happy to have fewer cells there. So you've now got this option uh, anyway. Um, here's what I was talking about earlier with the um, hex core. You can see here that you're getting quite a large change in volume here between the cells. Whereas here, um, you can introduce a polyhedral transition and that is designed so that you get a nice smooth stepping of cell sizes. So it's going to take a little longer to generate, but it's going to give you a much smoother mesh. Um, enhancements to parallel meshing. So particularly here, there's been speed up improvements, um, robustness, and less RAM. And previously, you could not use parallel if you had um, baffles, two-sided prisms, or any sort of periodics. Those restrictions have been removed. There's been improvements to what you can do with thin surface baffles. So this is where you've got a surface and you're using that as a baffle. So you've got two-sided inflation on it. If a couple of baffles join, this was the previous behavior. You really got a very poor inflation at the join because it had to strip it off. Here, you've got a nice continuous inflation. Um, 
Now moving on to the solver, one of the key new features that we've been introducing over the last few releases is this ability to um, use expression language, an expression language similar to that in CFX. Um, well, you can now, that's been extended so that you can use that with the definitions. So for reporting, um, you can use it as output and input parameters as well. So that's going to improve the flexibility. Of course, this is not the end. There's still many places where it's yet to be impl implemented, but this will continue in successive releases. Um, last release, we noted that there's been some improvements to the selection of time stepping. Um, that's been simplified yet again, so that you can choose um, either fixed or adaptive, and then you get a selection of methods. Um, so this GUI has been replaced by this one, where it's now much easier to set up what you want. And by populating um, this methods here, for example, it will automatically determine the time step and the number of steps, etc. On that same panel, there's a new button for simulation status. What that allows you to do is view um, all the details of the time stepping to date. So um, what time you're at, how many time steps have been done, what the range of time step sizes has been, et cetera. Also, if you're, if you're taking boundary conditions here, um, all these um, stator blades have been grabbed in one go and you want to set similar conditions on them, then um, when you display the conditions, it will tell you which ones are common to all, which ones are different on some of the um, those group and that will allow you to have more flexibility and um, transparency as to what you've done. For the density based solver there's been improved robustness, um, there's a bounded central differencing scheme which is going to help if you do scale resolving simulations or acoustics and there's a faster um, two-step runger cutter scheme. So um, if you're using this at all, there's some useful new features there to try out. Mesh smoothing. So if we've got a moving mesh um, and we want to preserve the quality, we have to do something about that. Um, what's happened here is that the best practices essentially have been built in to simplify this GUI to this. They've moved to diffusion smoothing in Fluent as a default, which is the same as CFX now. Um, and they've improved the robustness, if you've got parallel calculations, and enormous improvements of speed up. So um, if you're using um, any sort of mesh smoothing, this is gonna help you enormously. <laughs> 